Hello, let's begin one more session on multivariate calculus integration. Now, since last few lectures, we are discussing double integrals. In the last lecture session, we had talked about how to evaluate double integrals using the idea of change of order of integration. For today's session, our topic is double integrals using the concept of change of variables. Now, what is that and why do we need that? Now, so far, we had been actually evaluating double integrals of this kind, fx y dx dy over a region R, where of course, we are in the xy or the Cartesian coordinate system. However, sometimes it is advantageous to evaluate the integral in a coordinate system other than the xy coordinate system. And this may happen due to the complexity of the integrant or perhaps the shape of the region is so complex that it may demand a change in the variables. And it may happen that calculating the double integral in a new coordinate system may become simpler. So let us see the process. Let the variables x and y be transformed to a new set of variables u and v with the help of the transformation equations x equal to some function of uv and y equal to another function of uv. And suppose that the region R of integration in the xy plane be mapped into the region S in the uv plane. So now the formula for the change of variables is given by this equation over here. So what is that? Double integral fx y dx dy over r is given by the double integral f of x uv y uv. That means essentially this is a function of uv and the differential dx dy is replaced by modulus del of x y del of uv du dv where S is the now the region of integration in the uv plane. And what is this expression over here? Del of xy, del of uv. I'm sure you have seen this earlier. So this is called the Jacobian of the transformation and is given by this 2 by 2 determinant whose first row contains the elements del x, del u, del x, del v and the second row contains the elements del y, del u, del y, del v. So we will now see how to apply this concept in problems. But at this moment, I will request you to remember one property of Jacobian, which will be helpful. Del of xy del of uv equal to 1 by del of uv del of xy. We will see that very often in problems, this property will be helpful to calculate the Jacobian. Okay, and now before we start with problems, let us see the steps actually to be followed when we will use this concept of change of variables for evaluating a double integral. So the first step would be to find the pullback region S in the new coordinate system UV for the initial region of integration R. Now second step is to calculate the Jacobian of the transformation del of xy, del of uv and then we should write down the differential through the new variables that is dx dy should be replaced by modulus del of xy, del of uv, du dv. The third step is to replace x and y in the integrand by substituting the transformation equations x equal to function of uv and y equal to function of uv. Now, once we do this, we will be ready to evaluate the double integral in the new coordinate system. So, let us now start with a problem. Calculate the double integral dx dy over the region R, where R is bounded by the parabolas y square equal to 2x, y square equal to 3x and hyperbolas xy equal to 1, xy equal to 2. So, as usual, Let's draw the figure first. So it will look something like this. Here you can see we have the parabolas y square equal to 2x, y square equal to 3x and here are the hyperbolas xy equal to 1, xy equal to 2. Now 
If you would like to evaluate this integral in the Cartesian coordinate system, it will be a problem because all the four boundaries here are curved boundaries. And therefore, you will not be able to identify this as a type 1 region or type 2 region, what we have discussed earlier. And so, we would be unable to evaluate this integral in the xy coordinate system. So, what's the way out? Let us make a substitution to simplify this region r. Now, see, your boundaries here are y square equal to 2x or otherwise y square by x equal to 2. And the next one is y square by x equal to 3. So let's call this y square by x as u and this xy as v. So then what is happening to the region under this transformation? See that this boundary y square equal to 2x, this is now transformed into u equal to 2. Whereas the other boundary y square equal to 3x is now transformed into u equal to 3. So that means life is becoming simpler. We are having straight line boundaries. And next xy equal to 1 gets changed into v equal to 1 and the other re rectangular hyperbola xy equal to 2 that becomes v equal to 2. So what is the region now? I think we can easily see it's a rectangle. So it's here. A is the rectangle where u is varying from 2 to 3 and v is varying from 1 to 2. So we have completed our first step and the next step is to evaluate the Jacobian del of xy del of uv. But for that what we will need to do first? We will need to first express xy in terms of uv. So let us do that procedure. See that u equal to y square by x so this gives x equal to y square by u. The other equation was v equal to xy. So from here we can write v equal to we replace x by y square by u multiplied with y. So this gives us y cube equal to uv. Or otherwise now y is u to the power one third v to the power one third. And next x is y square by u. So now we substitute the value of y and finally we will get x as u to the power minus one third v to the power two third. So we have now obtained the expressions of x and y in terms of uv. So now we are ready to calculate the Jacobian del of xy del of uv. So this was our formula for the Jacobian. So here now we substitute the values of x and y that has been done. And now we calculate the determinant. We first of course partially differentiate. We will get these expressions and then calculate the determinant. And you can do the calculations I hope. And so what we are going to get is minus 1 by 3u. Now but observe one thing. This process of calculation of Jacobian is quite lengthy or tedious isn't it? First, we had to transform the variables and get the expressions for xy in terms of uv. And then this calculation of the Jacobian, that means the calculation of the determinant is also slightly lengthy. Now, how we can simplify the process? For this, the alternate way is to use the property which I already mentioned, del of xy del of uv is equal to 1 by del of uv del of xy. Now see that if I want to calculate del of uv del of xy, I can do it directly because u and v are known to us. So we can directly start calculating and by the property or by the formula del uv del of xy is now del ux del u del y del vx del v del y. So del u del x as u was y square by x. So this is now minus y square by x square and del u del y is 2y by x. Remember that v was just xy. So del v del x is y, del v del y is x. So we just calculate the value of the determinant and it finally comes as minus 3y square by x. So it's minus 3u. And so now if we make use of this property, del of xy del of uv equal to minus 1 by 3u. 
is the same thing as we obtained in the earlier process but definitely this is a much shorter one so that's why using the property i told already that might be very much helpful in many problems okay so once we have obtained the jacobian so now we get the relationship between the differentials so dx dy modulus of del of xy del of uv du dv so we take the modulus of minus 1 by 3u du dv so it is du dv by 3u now for this problem we don't need to do the first step because the f function is not present over here so we can now start evaluating the integral so double integral dx dy is now replaced by du dv by 3u because this is the expression we got for dx dy and our new region is now s so this is now pretty easy because it's just a rectangular region we can just put the boundaries so du by 3u u was varying from 2 to 3 and v was varying from 1 to 2 so du by u is of course log u so we get this one third log u limits are from 2 to 3 integral dv is just v going from 1 to 2 so finally the answer for the integral is 1 by 3 log 3 by 2 so we are over with the problem and we have seen that this problem actually we were unable to do in the Cartesian coordinates but with the change of variables we could easily tackle the problem okay so with this we will close today's session and in the next session we will continue the same topic but that we will see in the special situation the change of variables from the Cartesian to polar coordinates thank you